Welcome back to Amuro's in the Kitchen, LA edition, but made in Hawaii. Growing up in LA, one of the places we loved going to is Porto's Bakery. One of the things that they're famous for is their potato balls. And so today I'm going to try to recreate it. So let's get cooking. All right, first thing we do is get our potatoes ready for boiling and mashing. So their potato balls is essentially deliciously seasoned ground beef covered in mashed potatoes. So we've got the potatoes all chopped up, ready to get boiling. And of course, it's always a great idea to be cooking with my cousins, the Katinas, singing, live streaming in the background. I've got my potatoes boiling in hot water and the ground beef is sizzling away. To the ground beef, I'm gonna add some onions, mix that in, garlic, of course, loads of garlic, and then I'm gonna mash up the potatoes after I've drained it. Now back to the ground beef, in addition to the onions and the garlic, I'm gonna add some green peppers. And also, since I have it, I'm gonna add some red, orange, and yellow peppers as well to add some color and flavor. Get that mixed in. It's smelling pretty good at this point. So I'll just give a quick snapshot of some of the ingredients I'm using and we'll be these are the ingredients for both the potato mixture as well as the ground beef mixture. I used it as a baseline, but took liberty adjusting to taste as needed. So we've got the cumin going in, and then we've got the oregano, some paprika, salt, and some Worcestershire sauce. Is that how you pronounce it? All right, you give this puppy a good mix. At this point, my kitchen is smelling pretty good with all the seasonings mixed in. It is sizzling and it's smelling pretty good. So just scratch the screen a little bit. Can you smell it? Mmm. The cumin and the oregano. Oh, smelling good. I didn't have any fresh lime, so I always have this squeeze bottle of lime in my fridge, so I just eyeballing. I squeeze, taste, add more if needed. So while I'm finishing up the ground beef mixture, my mashed potato is cooling down, and now I'm just adding seasoning as needed, adding salt to the mashed potato for a little bit more seasoning. And then the next step is we just let everything cool down so that it's easier to handle. So after about half an hour, I've let everything cool down. And so I'm forming my potato ball. So basically take an ice cream scooper's worth of the mashed potato, flatten it like a pancake. So I'm just kind of bringing it back and forth, forming it just so that I have a foundation to put um, the scoop of the mixture, the ground beef mixture. Um, so a nice scoop in, and then I'm gonna just kind of tuck in the sides, folding it to form a ball. And I don't have quite enough, so I'm gonna add a little bit more potato to the top, um, just as needed so that it's completely enclosed in mashed potato, hence the name potato ball. So it's a nice size. And so my potatoes made me about, I think we had 21 potato balls at the end of the day. So here we have it my potato balls. So you're supposed to let that cool in the fridge for about three hours, but I couldn't wait. So I just let it cool for about an hour. So I started making the batter. So I'm gonna dunk and drench. First thing is I did about three eggs. So add a little bit of water, 
um, scrambled it up and then I made my dry mixture which is flour I think I did about one fourth cup flour to one cup of breadcrumbs I did not have breadcrumbs but I did have panko which is breadcrumbs so that's you know the Hawaiian version so I'm dipping it into my egg mixture and then I'm dunking I'm dunking into the egg mixture and then I am drenching it in my panko flour dry batter, re-dunking it back into the egg mixture because we're going to double dunk it and then back into the panko. So I'll be repeating this process 21 times. First one done, 20 more to go. And to get to the 21st, I had to actually make another batch of the dry mixture as well as the wet mixture. And my last one going in the pan. I can't wait to start frying them up, but I decided that I don't think we're going to fry them all up tonight. So we're going to go ahead and freeze. So in this container, I think I fit about, I don't know, five, nine, 13 of them. And so we're gonna just package it, put some saran wrap, cover it, and it's gonna go in the freezer. So what we did have left, we've got some cooking oil in my deep fryer, temperature to 375 nice and sizzling so i'm going to drop about five in there for the first batch give everybody enough room to bathe and bubble and here we go fresh out of the pot my first potato ball it's smelling so good and it's sizzling it's golden brown just perfect i can't wait to dig in all right Here's the last of my batch. So I think I had about nine potato balls. Plus I've got the 13 that we froze and I only used about half of my ground beef mixture. So if I whip up another batch of mashed potatoes, I can make another set of potato balls. But now the moment of truth. We're cutting into this delicious ball of goodness. You hear that crunch? Yeah, it was crunchy. The mashed potatoes was moist and the ground beef was so tasty. It was just the right amount of acid and flavors and the oregano and cumin. So I hope you enjoyed this version of Amuro's in the Kitchen, LA edition. Yeah.